afternoon, everybody. We are here for our fourth webinar uh, given by Ryan Dorn. He is our uh, Internet Strategy Coach. And a little quick bio uh, of Ryan. He has over 3,000 websites under his belt since 1996. And he works daily with niche magazines like ourselves. And he helps uh, develop strategies to make money using the various aspects of the Internet. And again, I've said this every time, but again, he he specifically uh, helped us um, our own company, and uh, I, can, I can personally vouch for him on a personal level that he really does do great work, and he has helped us immensely. Um, and his topic is going to be five keys to building a sellable site. So I'll let him take it from here, and uh, Ryan, we're all ears. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Can you hear me okay? I hear you. Um, Perfect. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if everybody else can, but uh, <laughs> you guys type in if you can. not all right, sounds good. Well, first of all, thanks so much, uh, you know, guys, Steve and Gall and Dave. Um, all you guys at Schwicky Media are just top notch, and I, I'm I'm very pleased to consider you not only friends but uh, you know also business partner, a business partner as well. So that's that's great. So you know, group group that's joined today, it's it's really um, I love to have questions, um, you know, throughout the presentation. So don't feel like you have to wait to the end uh, to ask a question. Of course, there are ways to ask. You can email to Steve or Dave uh, if you'd like to, or what's even easier is in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, you can just type a, a quick question in there, and we'll do our best you know, to work it into the program. If you'd rather send it to Steve uh, or Dave, that's fine as well, and then they'll punch it in uh, there as well. So please don't feel like you have to wait uh, until the end. This topic that we're talking about today, five keys to building a sellable website, is probably one of the biggest questions that I get on a regular basis. And we're going to go down today some sort of unconventional roads. I think that um, you know, it's, it's really difficult to define a great website. Uh, but you know it when you see it. And it's various topics that have come before the Supreme Court. It's very difficult to define uh, some, of the, some of the topics that come before the Supreme Court, but it's one of those things that many of the justices have said, well, it's hard to define, but we know it when we see it. It's kind of like a great print ad. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to define what is the perfect print ad. But when you see a great ad, you know it. When you see a great TV ad, you know it. And when you see a great website, you know it. Here's the There's so many fundamental things that most magazine publishers do wrong that we could talk for months. And I work with some of my customers, honestly, for months, and we tweak one thing at a time. So here's the first thing. You have to blow up your website you know, to be a success. Absolutely not. I would encourage you to take some of the fundamental things we talk about today – Go back to the web team, or maybe you're a, a smaller shop and you do it yourself. Go back and uh, just take one or two things we talk about today and, and implement it. Here's what I do as, as a coach and as a consultant. I don't talk in terms of 50,000-foot views. I, I hate that. It makes me crazy. Many people hate it when you go to a conference. You get somebody there from a big top 500 consumer mag talking about all these big things, and you're like, Shh, great ideas, but how can I apply that you know, magazine? Here you here at Brainswell Media. We talk about tactical and practical that you can uh, do right away. So today uh, we're going to talk, be talking about, you know, the five things, you know, to create uh, overall, you know, a sellable website. When I say that, I mean in terms of being able to sell it to your advisors as well as being able to sell it to your users. So let's get started. Is clean and lean. I put myself uh, part of the way through college by being a landscaper as just a common um, contract laborer. And one of the uh, from this guy, his uh, name was Charlie Hunter, and one of the landscape designers in the Midwest is that less is more. We kind of all agree with that. I'm going to show you some examples here in, in a second. What happens at most magazines is that you've got probably 25 or 30 things that you're very good at: features, photos, etc. I have to tell folks that I really believe that you need to set a goal of 10 things to focus on in terms of your website. Now, do all 10 of those things need to be on the main page? Not necessarily. What happens, and what you want to do when planning your website, is you want to get the entire team together. We'll talk about that in a, in a second, including the salespeople. Well, you know, yes, get the salespeople involved from the beginning. Everybody, put them in one room, and start listing out on a big whiteboard all the things that you feel are to have on your website. One of the things that's really important if you want to access online and create a sellable website, is do not duplicate your magazine online. Now, should 
people know that you are a magazine. I believe, and this is just one guy's opinion, I believe you should. I believe that having a magazine adds credibility to your website. Being a magazine adds credibility to your website. A lot of folks, what they say is they disagree with me. And they say, listen, creating uh, a web presence, and we want it completely separate from the magazine. Okay, great. I agree with that. Okay, But the magazine should add credibility to your website. A lot of times you'll go to a magazine's website, and you won't even know that it's a part of the magazine. There's a strategy behind that. There could be, but here's the thing. A website without a magazine is what? A magazine you know, with a website, a magazine without a website is just a magazine. The two things together can be a very powerful combination. I encourage you, do not duplicate your magazine online. Do extra things. Here's thing, something to remember. And this is the third bullet point. Technology cannot kill a good thing. People will, will go and build websites and build a jam up, ram dazzle, Chuck E. Cheese website that whirls and spins and twirls. And in the end, they're like, man, I've built this jam up website. Why is nobody using it? Well, I think that it comes down to this you've not kept it super simple. That's the fourth point. You didn't survey for success. Beginning to build your website. The most important thing that you can do is survey your readers, survey your potential users. You will find out that the great majority of the time you are wrong about what they want from a website. Here's the thing to take home from today. Ask your readers what they want online from your website. Throw assumptions to the wind and give them what they want. It's sad, but yet the great majority of magazine publishers do not do this. Instead, they sit in a room, they write down all those 30, 40 things on a whiteboard, like I instructed you to do, and then that's the end. They build from there because they assume they know what the reader wants. Take those 30, 40, 50 things, assemble them in some form of a survey, and ask readers, okay, here's, here's what we think. What do you think? You will be amazed at what it is they give back. You give them what they want. Why not use the website? That's what's so important. Then you need to mean, and you need to mean, and why does, what does this have to do with being sellable? Here's the thing. You give them what they want. They want the website, and that's called traffic. When you get great, great traffic, you're one step closer to great success. Now, because when you have great traffic, then your propensity to be able to sell to advertisers is, is so much higher. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the Guitar Edge magazine uh, website. I know it's probably you know kind of small on your screen, but I think you're going to get you know some some fundamental premises uh, from from this website. Obviously, you know they're in the uh, musician uh, space, and so thus you know the use of colors that are a little bit a little bit more dark. What's evident to everyone that comes to this website is what? This is our edge. And you'll notice that you can't probably see their slogan that's right here, right above their, you know, right above their uh, logo. But it's very clear that this is Guitar Edge Magazine's website. It's really important is that we want them, we want the readers, we want the users of the website to go here. We want them to explore the edition because they do a lot of extra things in the edition. I would like to note something. On the main page is an advertisement. You can see it right here. Okay, I'm not fixing it out because I don't like it. I'm just making a note. But it does seem to be a part of the website. Notice in this area right here at the top, these things move if you go to their website after this call. Okay? And in the little numbers here along the bottom, it changes. Everything that you see is, and look at this text right here, is a web exclusive. What this is, great, we'd love for you to read the magazine, we'd love for you to read our digital representation of the magazine right here. The best thing is, when you come to our website, we're giving you more. We're going to give you news. We're going to give videos. We're going to give you more music, which guitar people refer to that as tab or tablature. But when you look at the overall website, it's very clean. The lines are clean. Remember, people read left to right and top to bottom. Logo is clean. What they're representing as web exclusives here in the middle is clean. 
the ads are clean. And as you drill into this website, you'll notice that they do have more advertising along the top. But on the main page, they want to keep it clean. When you visit this website later on, guitaredge.com, that all of this information down here below is clean, it's well arranged, it's easy to read. Now, you go and build a black website. Now, it depends upon your demographic. But what I'm telling you right now is that when you look at guitaredge.com, you're going to see that this is an extremely clean, simple, straightforward website. And yet, covering a lot of things. On this page alone, they've got 15 things that they're trying to cover. You'll also notice that their navigation here along the top is very, very clean, very, very simple, very, very straightforward. The navigation is, is, is dynamite. Okay? Let's look at another example. This next website is called Progressive Forage. And this is for people that grow hay. Um, hay, if you know what hay is, um, I mean, some of you do, but hay that you feed horses, um, hay that you feed cattle, things like that. So one of the things to notice is that there's a lot of white space on this website. It's a clean, bright website. It's easy to find things. It's very obvious and very clear what they want people to do. So read left to right, top to bottom. They're going to start here at the top. They're going to read left to right. So here's their search you know, functions here. So here's a banner ad that's just a part of their website. What really stands out are these color photos that are here. These are their editorial stories here. And then what about this big old subscribe button? Good grief. And it makes it very evident, isn't it, what they want you to do. They want you to subscribe to the magazine. This is a page. Here's a 300 by 250 banner ad. This, of course, at the top is a 728 by 90. Is it simple? Yes. Is it popular? It is. Do they get complaints about navigation? No. Directing people to what they want? Yes. What are the three main things they want people to do? They want them to see the ads. They want them to be able to see the editorial very clearly. It's here. Click on any of these little thumbnails down below. The pictures change. Their edit that's located in this main area is very, very important. They over here want you to subscribe. And they're all this space at the top. It just makes it clean, simple, and fresh. They're focused based upon some advice from me and other people on three or four main things that they wanted to have happen, and they've done it, and they've done it well. Clean, simple, straightforward. This website is from Western Horseman Magazine, Top 500 Consumer Mag, produced by a, a previous employer of mine, uh, Morris Communications. I was involved in, the, in, the, in a lot of the internet planning for Western Horseman. I was not involved in the planning of this particular website. I'm bringing them points on this website not to demean the website, but just to point out um, some points of clarification. All the people at Western Horseman are still um, quite good friends of mine. This website, I come to the main page, it appears to me to be extremely cluttered. There's a lot of things uh, trying to be represented uh, on this page. I still think it's an excellent website. However, when I come here, I really don't know where to go. And in just a minute, I'm going to turn on some thermal imaging technology to show you what a, a user's eye is actually seeing. And it's something that's going to be really remarkable you know, to you guys. When you look in terms of creating a sellable website, the advertisements look like they're such a part of the website they don't stand out from anything else. Has everybody noticed that? I mean, this is an advertisement that's right here on the right. This advertisement, this right here in the middle, is this is an advertisement for the books that they have. There's such a, and here's another subscription offer that's here up at the top right. Everything is is done in the same sort of color palette, and so these ads don't stand out, you know, any more than this is right down here at the bottom. This is their features where they want people to go in this area right here. Okay, so if I'm an advertiser coming to the website, there's a couple ways that I could look at this. One, um, you know, one is the, the advertisement is definitely a part of the website. <laughs> the second is it, it really doesn't stand out for me as an advertiser. What does it do? Where where am I going to look? You know, where's the eye going to go um, as an advertiser? You know, what's going to set me apart from the editorial? So if I was an advertiser, I would realize I need to make sure that my ad is like yellow or a bright color to make sure that it jumps off of the, the particular page. Also, there's so many things competing on this page for a user's intention that it makes it you know, very difficult for us to you know, focus our eye in on something. Here's another thing. The use of the red, and we'll show you in just a couple minutes on creating a sellable website, draws users' eyes in, and it does is it makes my eye focus on that red, and I'm having a hard time you know, pulling myself off of that red header at the top. That might be a good thing. might be a bad thing, but that's just a point. 
So an advertiser's perspective, after all, we want advertisers to be on our website, right? We want to buy the website. First impression if I'm an agency coming by is I'm like, wow, you know, the ads are such a part of the website that there's really not any differentiating factors. Okay. Clean and simple. This website is a great website. I don't feel that it's clean and simple. Let's look at the most clean and most simple high-end websites that's extremely easy um, for uh, any publisher of any size to, to duplicate. This is the driver. This is one of, um, obviously one of the most visited websites on the Internet. It's used well for a reason. You can look at it, and immediately I can see, wow, that, I mean, that's very clean. Everything nice, clean lines. You'll notice that you've got you know, a lot of nice boxes to be able to, you know, to draw your attention. Now, they don't use a lot of color, and that's one of the things that, that I would probably do. The color that's dry is this red down here at the bottom. When we turn on the thermal imaging eye scanner in a second, you'll see this. You see the red bar down here. So I'm being drawn to the advertisements. I do am drawn to this blue you know, middle, so that's great. But what I want to point out to you is they want you to know here's the navigation. It's clean and simple. I want you to do most. Visit the driver's guide, this area right here. Okay? You'll notice it's right in the box. It's a simple, straightforward box. That they want you to focus on these four images down. down. Here's the last things right here, these three at the bottom. Overall, it's clean, it's simple, it's straight. I think that users reward me, uh, you know, with, with traffic. You'll notice that you would think that a website like this would have all kinds of advertising running right here at the very top you know, of the website, and they don't. They incorporate it more into the, into the bottom right. From an average perspective, would that make me angry that I'm not more towards the top? It, it really kind of depends on how it is that you look at your website and what direction you're trying to take your advertising. As you drill into this website further, um, you'll be able to see that the advertising does move to the top on uh, Car and Driver. Some good examples of clean and lean. Sellable website. After involvement. One of the things that happens more, more often than not is that the website is built then the part of the salespeople go and talk to advertisers. I would encourage you to reverse that 100%. I would encourage you to get your advertisers involved from day one. I would go to them in a meeting and say, listen, we're looking at our website. What can we do on our website that would help serve your needs? What can we do on our website that would help you sell more product? What can we do on our website or where can we place you on the site? What sizes do you like better than others? Can we build a forum for you that you could be involved in? What online videos? You need to find that advertiser, you know, what do they want to accomplish? from online properties and online presence. If you're able to do that and you're able to talk with them about that, the great thing is you're going to have their buy-in from the very beginning, and they're going to know from the very beginning that you want them to be involved in your website. So when it comes time for you to be able to sell uh, you know, advertising to them, it's not going to be something that you're going to say, wow, I, you know, I had absolutely uh, no idea that you guys were launching a new website. So what I found is when you're a publisher and you talk to the advertiser uh, you know, in advance, uh, to the Interactive Advertising Bureau standard sizes uh, that you're going to run, that when you get them all from the beginning, they're much, they're, their propensity to advertise is much better. Now, I mentioned AAB. IAB ad sizes are critical to your success. I talked about it before, is the Interactive Advertising Bureau. Standard sizes used by uh, web publishers uh, around the world. I want to encourage you to use IAB ad sizes, A, because it makes you look professional, it really truly is, uh, you know, what the sizes should be on the web. To work with agencies, you must have IAB standard sizes. So if you're making a note, uh, the IAB.net, you don't have to be a subscriber, but you just need to subscribe to the sizes that they, that they offer. Okay? Point on getting advertisers involved. You need to find out if there's programs that you can offer online. Is it lead generation? You know, particular things that they need, email addresses, do they need cell phone numbers? You need to find out what is it that an advertiser needs. You can make that happen online. You're going to have a winning situation. Now, let's think about this for a second. Okay, just answer your email right now. Listen to me real carefully for a second, okay? <laughs> I hope you're not doing that. Listen real carefully for a second. If you find what your users want for the website and you deliver, and what your advertisers want and you deliver, do you not have a winning combination? You're going to have traffic, and the advertisers are going to be excited about the website. 
get them involved from day one is really, really important, advertiser involvement. Here's one final point. You really do need to have ad sizes, <clears throat> excuse me, have something for all budgets. Now, I'm not a bunch of little blinky ads all over your website. Honestly, I think it looks terrible. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you have enough sizes that if someone truly is a smaller advertiser, they don't have a big, big budget, you want to make it so, so attractive that they want to buy a bigger ad or at least give them some type of option. What I do, though, is I don't want you to go out and install 15 little blinky ads at the bottom of the website. Will those ads work? Probably. But it's real small, and it junks up your website. So I need to have something for, for all budgets, but at a certain point, you know, the budget is going to be too small. Okay? Something kind of cool and kind of exciting. Um, yeah, you're all familiar with thermal imaging. Um, you've probably seen it on some of those ghost hunting shows and things like that. What happens is that a thermal imaging camera see areas that are hot. Well, what I've taken the websites, uh, some websites that we just looked at, and also do this to your website in Photoshop. What I'm going to show you is I will show you where people go, where they look when coming to a website. Now, what are important in terms of creating a sellable website on this? If to have a great website, you have to be able to guide readers, users, I just call them readers, through the site. How do you guide them? You guide them in terms of placement of colors and placement of things. How if they read the page from left to right and top to bottom? How should they read the page? What should read the page based upon where you want them to go? And you can control it with color choices, and you can control it with your placement. What is important to creating a sellable website? Because you need to guide them through and get them to engage with your features, with your software, with your programs, and with your advertisers. What happens when a lot of people design a website is they're just laying it out you know, based upon size, or they're just laying it out based upon some other factors, and they don't take into account that you need to create hotspots, those spots that will as a bright red on thermal imaging. You need to create those hotspots. You also need to be extremely careful when talking about those hotspots with your advertisers and things like that, because I'm going to show you a couple of examples where the advertiser's ad is such a draw, it's so hot, that you miss the kind on the other websites. Now, do users see the ads? Do you encourage clicks, drive ROI through these hot spots? Absolutely. And the layout of your website drive it all. So again, imaging is going to show us the hot spots. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's going to be really cool. Now, these are actual screenshots. I know this is one of Dave and Steve's um, favorite uh, magazines. Uh, <laughs> I don't know this throughout the magazine industry, um, people tend to use Texas Monthly as a as a, an example uh, a lot. I'm sure that Dave is laughing. Yeah, unfortunately, right. we also use us a lot. <laughs> <People. There you laughs> <go. laughs> Anyhow, when you listen now, so now follow me on this example, everybody, okay? And then I'm going to turn on the the normal imaging that you're going to see on your computer, just so that it so he understands it's going to look slightly different than you'll see on TV. I'd alter it just a bit so you could see it on your computer screen uh, more specifically. Now, let's stick together. Look at the screen, and you're probably to yourself, okay, the, you know, it might be drawn onto that huge red mark in the middle of the screen. Probably so. Now, I, the human eye, would think, looking to the top right, that Dallas and Fort Worth blue um, banner, you would think that your eye would be drawn there. But when I turn on this thermal imager, you're going to be amazed. What this will show is the main colors that your eye is drawn to. Obviously, your eye is not drawn to gray. It's not drawn to black. It's drawn to oranges, yellows, reds. So let's let's go to the next screen here and turn and turn this on, okay? All right. This is, you know, what your core, the eye, your core eye actually sees. And using the tracking device, you've seen the tracker got, is turned on happening is your your eye comes to the page it doesn't even go to the logo the first place it goes is to that huge slash in the middle then the eye goes is to the barbecue um, and then the next it goes is to that yellow uh, box you know that blue in the top right is almost not even seen eye. so what's happening here is we've we've matched up based upon um, you know several scientific studies we've matched up a filter 
that mimics what I actually see. And you make that, that with hand. Let's go back for a second. So your eye picks out all of the gray. You'll notice the yellow bar that's you know down here towards the, the bottom right here. It's drawing their eye. This head right here is drawing their eye. So if their goal was to draw in everybody to this near fear, I would say that you know overall that was achieved. What can they do and what can you do on your website you know, to potentially learn from this? This baby blue is not necessarily something, if that's what that color is, robin egg blue. It's always something that draws in their eye. If you want that to stand out, it's going to have to be a different color. Let's take a look at the thermal again. Tractor. So the eye tells us that, that they've come into this middle part uh, in the middle going over to barbecue. Let's take uh, another, another example. So we're learning from this, right? I mean, that colors are driving people's eye. Let's take a look at the next one. Whoa, like buckets. Okay? So this, again, this robin egg blue, you've got advertisement up here at the top is, is pretty prominent. But these pictures, you know, these sleeves uh, here, get in the middle. You've got a, another advertisement down here, an advertisement at the top. I'm guessing that we're all going to agree what's going to happen probably when we click on the thermal imager. Uh, I scan. So you think, you know, that the eye is going to go first. Okay, so let's click on it. Okay, you, wow. Okay, so we were right. So the first place that the eye goes is up here to the banner ad. Then it left to top stories and stops by the middle and then next right, you know, to the, to the win. Here's the cool thing about this that you guys will really, you know, want to know. This is exactly the pattern they want you to follow. How do I know that? I, I happen to have a friend of a friend um, that works on their web team. This is exactly what they want to have happen. They want you to go banner, left top story, middle, next banner. That's exactly what they want to have happen. That's exactly what the thermal imager shows us. How can you learn from this? It, it gives you an idea to be able to go and go back to your own website and lay things out in such a way that basically mimics people's eye patterns. They're going to read left to right, then top to bottom. So what happened on this you know, particular uh, website? They started you know, over here, and they read to the banner ad went you know over to just like it says it went here it went here they went here and then it went here so it followed that pattern of left right left right and then it would come back over here in some cases but then it went back over to the side when you talk about creating a sellable website you've got to be able to create patterns with the eye that will advertisers because look at this you can tell an advertiser we have proof that this is how people read the website if you can get users to engage in this way, you're going to notice your web tra traffic go up. Let's look at an example. Here's horse and rider magazines. Those of you that don't know, um, my wife and I uh, raise uh, quarter horses. I have many horses. <laughs> and, um, and so let's take a look at this website. Kind of like Western Horseman's website. Isn't that interesting? Both horse magazines. They have a lot of red you know, that's here uh, you know, at the top. You know, they've got a bunch of headers that are red here. And so it's, it's probably not going to be surprising to all of you when we look at this website, what's going to stand out that we've, now we've had this happen. But it's a question to ask. Is that what you want your users to do, or is it just a pretty design? Does it help you? In this example before, we actually know it does help. In this example, are they encouraging people to left to right and to bottom on horse and rider? Let's take a look. is people's eye is going from the horse and rider logo to the next red thing over to the left to the next red thing. What's happening is I guess we could say that so this is where the eye is starting, right here. This is where the eye is starting. So what I overlooked, all of your paying the top. They did it. They started the horse and rider logo according to our eye tracker it went to the right, so it did hit some of these headlines, but what was happening is it was happening on its way to this, and it could have made it over here first as well. Okay? What else is missing? There is no exposure for here for GMC. We're not seeing it. I do here. This is probably why the eye went here, is it went from, from the horse rider down to this red to the cover, and then if you eye tracker here, it's actually going to this red, but it's also going to this blog picture that's over here. What can you from it? laying out your website and creating hotspots 
for your content and your advertisers is very, very important. We do to potentially redesign this website. We would take this, this you know, mat head, if you will, here, and we would move it to the top. We take the ad here and potentially move them down. We would potentially not use red here, or we would guide the eye left from the top to where we want them, and then we would create something else here and bring them across, create something else here, and then bring them across. It actually work. One million percent. People that know, know, and people that know it, do it, and people that do it, reap the rewards of this kind of information. Thousands of dollars people spend to this exact information, and what you're learning today about how an eye tracks through a website makes it more sellable. Increase your traffic, rearrange your web page a little, little bit. You want to create spots for your advertisers, you want to create hotspots for your editorial, utilize color to do it. Is red the only color? No. Look down here. You've got blues that work. You've got yellows that work. You want to stay away from grays, blacks. Here's a blue that draws your eye in. Obviously, red is one of the more predominant colors. Is this how companies do it? Absolutely, exactly how they do it. It's for companies all the time, all of the time. Do they make these changes? Well, not always. <laughs> But when they do make the changes, do they see a benefit? Absolutely. They have seen click-through rates climb by as much as 7 to 12% by moving advertisements in a line of sight. Okay, line of sight. Hotspots. Really, really part of making your website sellable. Okay, if you type them into that box down below, we'll answer them as we go. As we go, happy to answer your questions. Tip number four. Really important sales commitment. You truly involve your sales team from day one. How people on this call like to be told what to do? Very few. Of it starts in your life when? As a kid. I know a lot of you do. Love my kids. Love them, love them, love them. But to be told what to do? No. So how do you make them do what they want to do? Get discipline them. Show them respect, and they'll show you some back. <laughs> Love my kids. Love them. Be told what to do. So just imagine you're a salesperson, not the sales manager, because the sales manager is almost always involved. You're a salesperson, and uh, you know a website's being redesigned, and uh, about six weeks, eight months, you know, a year later, depending on how long it takes the website to get done. <laughs> sales meeting. The publisher says, all right, guys, new website, let's get out there and sell it. Take a look at it, and, the, and as a salesperson, you go, first of all, whoa, okay, um, either awesome or be, whoa, that's bad. <laughs> um, and say, okay, what about um, you know this size, Dad? Do you do you guys have those in the design? No, no, no. We're gonna go with this, this size, okay? All right. Do you um, have advertiser forums where our advertisers can get sales leads and things like that? No, no, no. We decided we don't want to do that. Okay. Do you have any way for us to collect email addresses so we can grow our e-newsletter list? Um, yeah, but we don't want to put it to the top of the page because it distracts from the editorial content. Okay. Um, and so you expect the person to get excited about selling your website? 10 of 10 is exactly what happens. Here's what I advise you to do. I think you need to get your salespeople involved from the beginning, especially if you have cover and creative salespeople. The sales to the website is almost as important as the design because they are going to be the ones – that sell it. See, I know a lot of people that have really nice websites, and they don't have very good uh, sales teams. Through all of the, the, you know, the P's, if you will, and uh, you know, we get through all of the, you know, um, price and the process, and and then we get the last P, um, which is uh, well, the four P's: product. Is your product good? Yes or no? Um, is your price right? Yeah. Yes or no? Um, do you have a process in place? Then you get down to people. And I've seen more salespeople get excited about web design when they've been involved from the beginning. Wouldn't you be? Aren't you passionate when you're asked to participate? There's a lot of ease in that, a lot of alliteration. People are more passionate in a project you know, when they're asked to participate. P, 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 P. I think that's called alliteration. <laughs> Didn't do real good in English in college. Thing. If you to have a sellable website and you want to make money from your website, do you need a great website? Um, it helps. But I've 
bad websites with really sales people that have knocked out of the park and are and are beating some of you right now. They don't really have that great of a website. Is the website decent? Yes, so, yes, it is. I mean, you do have to have a good website. You need to keep it clean and lean. You need to focus in hot spots. You need to be giving the readers what they want. You've got to have salespeople that are excited about the product. People that are excited about the product will get out there and will sell it with passion. If your salespeople don't have passion, maybe they need to start, I don't know, selling something else. One of the ways you can get them excited, get them involved from the beginning. Salespeople have a unique ear, you see. Salespeople have a unique ear. Why? Because they're listening to advertisers every day. When they come back to you and they say, I have an idea. Because half of the time, that idea came from a... Love salespeople. I'm one of them I sell every day. Many of you on this call are salespeople. And you're the publisher. And you're the janitor. And you're the coffee maker. <laughs> Bless you. I love coffee. But here's the thing. Sales ear. And a lot of times when they come to you and they say, hey, I've got an idea, what they mean is my advertiser asked for an idea or they've just saying it that way. I have an idea. Listen up. Sales is easier when you've been one, kind of a thing, kind of a dumb thing, but it does make sense. If you sell something, if you've been involved from the beginning, you'll have at least a little bit more passion about it. This cannot be overlooked. Don't take this too lightly. So many people do. I've got a great website. Why am I not making any money from it? Well, your salespeople, have you ever involved them? Or do you just throw it to them and say, hey, you need to go out there and sell it? Just on it. Perhaps it's established. Good. Perhaps you need to get those salespeople some more training. Perhaps you need to get them excited about the internet again. You need to pull them in and you need to say, okay, you know, sales reps, what is it about the website that you maybe don't like? What do you think would make it more sellable? Are there other advertisers you're asking for? Give it to them online. Do you have some new ideas? Because we have a great website, but we're not selling it, guys. And they're probably going to say, yeah, I have heard this or I have heard that. I've seen sales teams transformed in one meeting because you asked. You brought them and you asked. Fireside chat. Enough of the sitting around the bonfire talking about sales. Huh? Here's the thing. Get people involved and get other members of your team involved from the beginning. That's tip number four. Tip number five. You've got to be prepared to engage beyond. Let me take a water real quick. the end of it all. When you're putting together your sellable website strategy. Sellable meaning you can sell it to an advisor and you can sell it to your user. As you've talked about on other calls, what do you have to do? You've got more than your website. Your users are and you're going to have to engage with them. So you've got this thing, right? Right. You've got a quality website. Right? Right. Now, you need to make sure that your Facebook page is active, is entertaining, and has some great information on it. Make a commitment to work on your Facebook fan page or your space or whatever social media you're engaging in. Do you have your tool is it used on, an, on a regular basis? It doesn't have to be used every day, but the website is not the end. The website is just one piece of the overall puzzle, your multimedia puzzle, perhaps your radio show. Perhaps online. Perhaps you need advertisers to participate in videos online. Your web is not the end. You have to be prepared when you're building your website to engage beyond. Then you have to push back and forth. The print magazine is a print magazine. If you don't push people over to the website and vice versa, you need to push from the web back to the magazine or important equation. Most publishers will push from the magazine to the website by using pr by ads and things like that. That usually is one of the most ineffective ways to, to push people to your website. What you want are articles. Let's say you have a do-it-yourself article, and they're going to um, have a video that represents what they talked about in the article on the website. You want to push people to the website to sign up. Then what do you do? Email the website? No, 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 no. You want to know if it's going to be published. The web published in our May edition. 
Push them back. Make them go to the web. Make them go to the magazine. Okay. Well, that's pretty inefficient. Well, it does. It's just one example. But here's the thing: you have to come up with creative ways to push people back and forth. Do it from the magazine. Now you have to push them back to the magazine as well. A lot of you can do that there. One of the find failure very quickly is this one, two, three, four, five, six word saying: "It would be nice if." Here's the thing about it should be nice if. It should be nice if everybody thought about that before they said it. <laughs> Here's the thing. It should be nice if really means I really haven't thought about this much, but I had one person talk to me about it, and so I'm bringing it to your, your attention. Here's what I like to do um, within my organizations. I don't allow them to say it sure be nice if. Think about it a little bit more thoroughly than that, and then bring it to me because I really want to hear your ideas. I really do. But think of it more thoroughly than it sure would be nice if. Because what that means is they really haven't thought about it very long. long. You really need to think about it a little bit further. Here's the other thing. People have come to a website, and they've seen one day it's like there's something there, and they come back a few days later, and it's gone. Raise your hand. Has that happened to you? Okay, I see you raising your hand. <laughs> Here's the thing. The only person the website gets old to, if it's a good website, is you. Because your users become accustomed to finding things on your website. If you come back and can't find it because you as the publisher have got bored with how the website looks, it really makes them angry. And what's the, what's the key ingredient behind that problem? It should be nice if. If we had a search such and such that did this and that, it sure would be nice if, if we moved this from here to there. Sure, isn't this boring? Isn't this website old? I mean, we've had the same website for a year, I mean, or for two years. And Yeah, but here's the thing. Look at your Google Analytics. Look at your patterns, and the people are going. I mean, do, do they engage on the website? Now, if they don't engage on the website, then perhaps you do need to move some things. But what you do is become guilty of, it sure would be nice if, and constantly be changing your website. Constantly changing is different Either A, reinventing yourself or keeping your website fresh. Thinking about changing things based upon it sure be nice if, is if you had your headlines in the top right and get rid of them completely because it looks kind of boring. You need to make not going to make your users angry. It's all part of creating a sellable website. Because you engage the users at a unique and different level, you have a great propensity to be able to bring them back time and time again. A sellable website is really that simple. You need to make that a clean and lean website. Make sure that you don't try to jam too much on it, and don't try to duplicate, you know, your uh, your magazine. Second thing is you want to be extremely careful that it's true. You want to make sure that you have advertiser involvement. The next is create hot spots. Use in the posterizing tool in Photoshop to replicate some of the things that we uh, that we talked about today. The fourth really want to get your salespeople involved. It's really, really important to get your sales team involved from the very beginning. And don't leave out, of course, editorial and graphic design, but what typically happens is the editorial team will drive the website design, and yet they're not always cognizant of the advertising details. Okay? And then the thing that we, want, that we talked about is you need to be prepared to engage beyond your website if you want it to be sellable. You want to advertise, or, hey, we've got a great website. Here's the other things that we're doing as well. Your website is just not, not enough anymore. We haven't had any questions come through. I'm sure that you might have some. So, um, you know, yeah, I mean, Steve, you, you, we have some questions go, come go, in. Go ahead. Did, you, um, did you go into that now, or do you, you still have a little bit more? No, no. I haven't okay. seen any pop-ups, so go ahead and read them out. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What is um, a recommended ad server? One thing we use a lot is we use Ad Juggler. Ad Juggler because it's it's affordable. Um a key customer. Um, you know, we offer ad serving solutions through Ad Juggler here at Brain and Swell Media, so that would save you 25%. Typically, it costs you $125 a month, but you get that 25% less. That's one serving solution. If you use a management system, you could uh, potentially use um, the uh, services they have, you know, built in. Joomla and Drupal have built, built in serving solutions. Looking for sort of a, you know, just sort of something that's a little more turnkey, you know, you can go even look at, like, for example, Bannerman Pro and things like that. Really feel that Ad Juggler is affordable. Um, Chueki partnership, it can be very affordable for you, or you can buy it on your own. I think it's like three hundred a month. Important ad serving. Uh, those are good ad serving solutions. 
Okay. Uh, I've got a couple more questions here. Um, how can we do our own thermal testing? Wait, if you want to mimic it slightly, <clears throat> take the page and you would give a screenshot. Um, you put that into Photoshop. Go to like a filter, I think it's called Polsterize. And you'll just you'll um, take it to either the left or the right, one side or the or the other. The one and that will mimic. It won't be the exact thing that we have because we have a tool that tracks the eye as well. Um, actually, what happens is there's a little camera that sits on. When we use this tool, there's a camera that sits on top of the monitor, um, and it really you know watches where the eye goes. It's it's pretty cool. The eye tracker. Do kind of your own you know imaging, and you'll be very surprised you know, what it reveals. But I believe it's called Polsterize. In Photoshop, you can also then do like there's a there's a thermal setting on on the uh, Photoshop, uh, you know, as well. Okay, and I think um, I think there's just one more question. And anybody else who, who's out there that has any other questions, please do send them in. Uh, like right now, uh, let's see. What is a good number of ads to display on the home page? Um, I, most cases, I typically don't like to see more than five. What I like to do typically is have an ad at the top and the bottom, and a cut in the right or left rail or within the content. Mm -hmm. If you have three of those ads, you know, along the right side, um, that would probably be okay as well. Um, a website I can point you to that has, you know, some pretty good examples of of how to integrate ads is Country Roads, plural, magazine dot com. Country Roads Magazine has been a, a customer of mine for quite some time. Good, good group of people in Louisiana, and um, Country Roads with an S, magazine.com, and they do a nice job of integrating the ads in such a way that it doesn't look uh, bad. Be really careful, um, you know, about the number of ads uh, because you don't want to, you know, muck the, the website and make it look horrible. I think there's a kind of a tasteful and collective way. So if you start with four, uh, that's, you know, a really good starting point. If you have a, a leaderboard at the top, I would also put one at the very bottom of the website. Even though not a lot of people click on the bottom one, it will double your page, your ad impressions. So more ad units on your on your website is um, a couple things happen. One, it does give your advertiser more exposure, but it also increases your total number of ad impressions. And you know, really, really important. Talking about being able to sell all of those impressions. I mean, that's some we got a um, a sales training seminar coming up in in uh, Dallas in Atlanta here next month, and uh, it's all about selling those digital impressions. So if you need more you know, information on that, reach out to me and I can get you in contact with the, that. It's called Camp Niche, campniche.com, selling a lot of those digital ads. We'll talk like for about an hour about the sizing of those ads. Okay. Um, what about the, do you sell ads the same way you sell online ads as far as, it, is it monthly, monthly? Does it, coin, does it need to coincide, you know, coincide with the frequency of your own magazine or can you touch on that? Sure. What the demand is. Um, I'd say that 95% of the customers I work with sell on a monthly basis. There's a couple reasons why. One, it's a little bit easier for the advertisers to understand. Uh, secondly, it's a little bit easier for the salespeople <laughs> to understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if people aren't asking for it, total impressions or one to pay by CPM or cost per thousand, then we stick with you know more of a monthly model because it's just easier to manage. Easy, well, not easier to manage necessarily. It's just easier for most people to you know, to understand. So I'm going to get an ad for that month of May. I'm going to get a banner ad for the month of May. I'm going to get included in your newsletter in the month of May. I'm going to get a, a Twitter update on your Twitter page in the month of May. I'm going to get, you know, a mention on your Facebook fan page in the month of May, and I'm going to get a video online in the month of May. So if you put it together in the month of May, it's a pretty complete, you know, buy. Do I recommend selling by cost per thousand? I think that I could in certain uh, circumstances where you have a lot of traffic. So the people that I see on the call today, I'm getting familiar with a lot of your magazines. You don't have enough traffic to worry about selling by cost per thousand. And quite honestly, you won't make, it, you won't make any money um, doing that because your cost per thousand across the country is like $3.25 or less. Based upon what most of you have, you're going to make about 100 bucks an ad. So based upon your audience rather than the total number of impressions is going to potentially – you know, make you more money. If it's going to make you more money, at least it's going to allow you on your ad package to create greater value. Um, so if you discount it, you know, for the advertiser to get them excited, you know, you'll be able to have a little bit better margin to work with. 
Okay. All right. Let me let check see if there's any other questions that have come in. Nope. I think that's anything else you want to touch on, Ryan? I mean, that's okay. Um, you know, we don't want to go the exact full hour. Just, I, I'm, I'm really, I hope that everybody, um, you know, is able to go back, you know, and look through this and understand that you don't have to blow up your website, you know, to make these, these, and these things are just, you know, so important. Isn't it interesting that the things, in my opinion, that actually create a sellable web website are that really don't have to necessarily do with the website itself, like dealing with your salespeople, and it's just that that will make all the difference. Yeah, and I'll touch on that. That was one of our main issues. Um, we just couldn't figure it out because they, uh, you know, they get there and they're like, well, you know, this doesn't compare anything to, to Texas Monthly or, you know, this, you know, we don't have near the amount of hits as like all these like crazy, you know, humongous, um, you know, frequented websites. And I'm like, listen, when we get there and it finally, you know, with Ryan's help, we finally drove the point home is when we get there, we're going to raise our rates, you know, but what yeah. you're selling now still does have value, still does have a lot, a, a lot of value. And, and then also you uh, had us making money in nickels and not thinking in terms of like dollars, you know, you, you just, you know, you, you slowly make a little bit, a lot of little bit of money, you know, lots of little bit of purchases, mm -hmm. a lot of little bit of sales rather than like, you know, big dollars that that going to make up a lot of revenue. And yeah. they, they do add up, it adds up more than you think it will. Uh, and at the very beginning, you just don't think that way. And your sales mm -hmm. people for sure don't think that way. And then also they, they, um, they really do need to believe in what they're selling. They really do need to believe in that value. And there is value in, in pretty much all of our websites. There's some sort of value, you know, mm -hmm. from a low end to high end. And everyone needs to know that once you're getting your traffic up more and more, you're gonna, your rates are going to go up. So just, yeah. just price it correctly um, and, and then make sure your sales people understand that. Um, okay. That was a huge roadblock that we had. That we, after just, just, just after weeks of finally dealing, we finally broke into that. And right when we broke into that psyche, boom, the floodgates were open. So um, that's that's very, very, very important to to understand. And again, Ryan obviously is is here for everybody uh, to to consult and obviously purchase his services and stuff. And it and it's well yeah. worth the money because it it's really paid off in spades for us. And it's and it's those types of things that you just don't quite understand. That that get brought out through through correct training and all this. Yeah, I mean, did you remember? I remember the day when we were talking together with your group, and sort of the light bulb went off. And these are pretty, so everybody knows. I mean, these are pretty smart, you know, pretty bright salespeople. And it was like just all of a sudden the light bulb came on, and they were like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that makes yeah. sense." And before I remember that day that, vividly. Yeah, yeah. Before that, it was it was just struggle, a struggle. Yeah, I mean, wasn't a battle and all this. Fifty thousand dollars of investing and all this over the years, and of course, nobody, not everybody, needs to invest that. But just over the years, it's all this time and effort of doing it, and we still weren't selling for it. Right. And uh, it just didn't make any sense. And we had numbers, you know, and uh, we just couldn't break through to the psyche and understand, have the salespeople, and even myself, really, mm -hmm. understand all, all of it. And then when it finally light like, goes off, it all makes sense. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So went through. If you remember when you guys were redesigning, uh, you know, one of your websites. We went through the whole layout process. We looked at where people, you know, were going to go on the website. You guys spent a lot mm -hmm. of time on that um, on on your website, on studybreaks.com, mm -hmm. determining okay, what's going to be our main features? Where are people going to go when they come to the website? Where should the ads be? What should the sizes be? Um, you know, and it, it was instrumental in the development of your new website. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, it was huge. It was huge. And obviously, the money coming in is going to help make it better. Yeah. You know, invest back yeah. in and make it better. So. So all that's very, very important outside of all the aesthetics as well as just the understanding of it all and, and you know, and transferring that understanding to yourself, sure. people, and, and have them get involved. What, what he was touching on about nobody likes to be told what to do is, uh, you know, that just goes on the point of um, once they think they're a part of it in a decision, it's almost like they created it as, uh, themselves. <laughs> all of a sudden they believe in what, what, they, yeah. what they created themselves rather than us telling them this is good value, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's very important too. It's just it's it's all you know it's it's pretty like anything in sales. It's all you know, it's, you know your psychology of it and everything. Right, and the perception. Important. Yeah, yeah, the perception. It's just you know, guys, you know, in, in kind of in conclusion, you know, don't forget. I mean, just people are passionate. It doesn't matter who it is. People are passionate about a project when they're asked to participate. I mean, they just are. Whether it's an editorial, whether it's interns, whether it's a sales manager, uh, you know, whoever it is, a, 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 one of your secretaries. Um, you know, it's consistent. I mean, people are a lot more passionate when they're involved in, in the process. And so it's, it's really important as you're looking at your website to get, you know, several minds in the room, 
um, and uh, and you really look at it in a, in a thorough way. So. Yep. Well, thank you again, Ryan. Uh, very informative. Yeah, uh, I, I really do hope that this helps everybody, and uh, I believe that it will. Uh, well, uh, I guess we'll see you again in four weeks, and okay. uh, I'll be sending out the recording for everybody here uh, by the end of this week, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or you need anything else. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks, all of you very, very much. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.